for everyone inside the local movie theater. Today, blockbusters, films that people want to see again and again, have become the engine that drives the motion picture industry. In the past, it was our emotional connection with the action on screen that allowed us to feel what a movie character experienced. But we could never go further than that. We could never become part of the movie. Until now. Attraction combines thrilling, sometimes terrifying, high-tech special effects with familiar action scenes from well-known blockbusters. It's a new form of entertainment that's already being measured in the billions of dollars. Construction workers, engineers, and creative geniuses recently transformed this piece of Florida scrubland into one of the world's most advanced high-tech theme parks. Universal Studios' Islands of Adventure opened to huge crowds on May 27, 1999. Come behind the scenes with us as we see what it takes to create billion-dollar fun. For more than 80 years, Los Angeles has been the capital of the movie industry. It's now the capital of the movie attraction business as well. Today, even a record-breaking blockbuster may stay in the theaters only for a matter of months. But reborn as a movie attraction, it can continue to pull in audiences for years to come. It's certainly a plus to any film if it can translate into a theme park attraction. And ultimately, it certainly gives <clears throat> the film greater life and gives, in this case, Warner Brothers a uh, greater identity, you know, in the marketplace. I think Hollywood's very serious about this business. Most of the major studios have some form of theme park or attraction that they own, and all of them are looking at the business very seriously. They see it as an extension to the shelf life of their film and an additional source of revenue f from their film products. Since the early days of the movies, people have often built their dreams around Hollywood and the stars. Touching a concrete handprint is as close as they'll ever get to their movie heroes. Television and the movies have become such a, a, a visible international medium that people want to be close to the people who are on it. They have a kind of fairy tale image of these funny people, and so they'll go off to the Grauman Chinese Theater to put their hands in their hands, uh, and they'll go off to uh, studio tours to be near the actors and actresses. And it's all about being close to people they think are close to them by virtue of the fact they see them on the box or on the screen. Now, thanks to the movie attraction, we can all get closer to the stars and the action. Much, much closer. Uh, a theme park experience is not a solo experience. I mean, very few people go to a theme park alone. Uh, it's a group experience, it's a shared experience, it's a family experience. And you're able to go, it's one of the few places left that you can go and, uh, and actually have these adventures with members of your family or, or your friends or your schoolmates. The public's fascination with movie making is nothing new. In 1914, studio boss Carl Lemley started charging people 25 cents for a ringside seat to watch his movies being made. The public was happy to oblige. The 1933 classic King Kong became one of the first films transformed into an attraction. Now, almost 70 years later, Kong is still on the studio payroll, doing his best to scare the wits out of paying customers at theme parks in Hollywood and Florida. Oh, 
Kong has endured for more than half a century. But the biggest risk in the business is figuring out which movies will also work as attractions. You have to keep abreast of what people are reacting to. And uh, I think that uh, it's never too early. I mean, uh, the minute we hear about a new big movie, whether it's, uh, you know, a Lost in Space or a Godzilla, uh, whatever, we're, we're interested in talking to them to see if there's some kind of attraction that we can create for them. And uh, I think that that's a continuous process, and that, that really never ends. You're, you're always looking for what the next great attraction might be. I think it could be quite exciting to try to come up with a, a ride or an attraction that captures the flavor of the film that it's based on and yet survives on its own as an interesting and uh, exciting adventure. It's very hard to anticipate which film will make a good theme park attraction. For one thing, you don't know which film will be successful, and they have to be successful. Uh, in order to turn them into attractions, visitor attractions. But also you don't quite know, going in, which kind of film will lend itself to which kind of ride technology. Some are more obvious than others. That, that's, all the, that's all the same as the... As Steven Spielberg was one of the first directors to see the potential of the movie attraction. This is a very expensive version of the model. <laughs> Having transformed blockbusters such as Jaws and E.T., he's now creative consultant to Universal Studios theme parks. We began the concept of Jurassic Park the Ride while Jurassic Park the film was in production, right? even before it came out. Uh, it, it, it's not that I was anticipating a, a big success, but it was such a natural, the movie is about basically a theme park that goes um, amiss. At one point, somebody said, what are the theme parks more successful than the movie? And I said, uh, uh, that could happen, uh, who knew? The trend in entertainment is that everything is merging together, and movies are going to become more like theme park rides they're going to add visceral experiences to them, etc. Theme park rides will become more like feature films. Um, and then you throw in all the other new media technologies, and all of that is going to blend into new entertainment forms that are neither fish or fowl. They'll be some, some new hybrid. In movie, you have 90 minutes to tell a story, and there's a tremendous amount of background information, etc., that you can absorb and come to this experience with all of that background information. So a lot of the storytelling is already done for us. We only have to give them cues to bring that back into their memory. And once we've done that, they're already halfway there because we only have four and a half minutes to tell them their whole story. I think the success of these attractions stems from a number of different sources. I mean, one is it's, it's a huge physical thrill. It's like a roller coaster ride in a sense. But I think that the audience does want to feel like they are participating in it more closely. I think that what we're headed toward, which hasn't really been explored yet, is the opportunity for a member of the audience as an individual to have like a one-on-one -on -one encounter with Harrison Ford or Meryl Streep or some actor or actress in a way that they can't do in a normal movie because they're not included in a normal movie. They're an observer. They're a, they're a non-participating voyeur in a movie. In these kinds of attractions, you're there with those people. The success of an attraction depends on the designer's ability to turn a two-dimensional movie into a vibrant, hyper-realistic three-dimensional experience. The film has the ability to edit what the audience is looking at. Um, the director can choose different points of view and in rapid succession go from a wide shot to a close-up. Well, when you're really in a three-dimensional experience, you can't do that. So we have to very deliberately create the shots, if you will, by the design of the attraction. And um, the ride path forms the editing process in the way we reveal things to the guests or we let things sneak up on the guests. If we wanted to go to a quick close-up, instead of being able to edit quickly, we might hide an element behind a corner and then have it spring at you immediately around coming around that corner so we can get that kind of quick, dramatic response. This TLC program is sponsored in part by Dodge and nearly 3,000 dealers who invite you to come see what's different. This is kind of how you look to the infrared sensors in the all-new Dodge Caravan. They read the temperature around the driver, front passenger, and back passengers, and give each zone its own control. It's the only minivan that offers automatic three-zone climate control, because some like it hot, some like it cool, and some just want in. Dodge Grand Caravan, the best minivan ever.
different. Five star meals from world renowned chef Michelle Rue. Celebrity, the one cruise that puts dining in a whole new light. Celebrity cruises. Sea life on a different level. This is the hardest thing I've ever done. I mean, these people were like family to me. Remember I met Jeannie at the company picnic? Ah, it was the best thing that ever happened to you. Yeah, taking the new job was a tough decision. <laughs> Deciding what to do with my 401k money was another. I didn't want to mess it up. I called T. Rowe Price. You know, you told me about the mutual funds. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, they sent me a rollover kit, you know? Took me through it step by step. I made it easy for you. Yeah. Piece of cake. T. Rowe Price, helping people invest with confidence for over 60 years. It's gonna be a good job. Yeah. Human courage. Chaos. Being. Are you human? These are the people of Las Vegas. The gambler. Everybody in life gambles one way or the other. No one can bet more than everything they have. The kid. It's quite happy in Las Vegas. The performer. If God had wanted me to be a woman, he probably would have given me the 10 grand for the operation. The minister. Hey, Father, bless me or bless my machine. The dancer. This is supposed to be Sin City. I believe that it is only human. See the real Vegas from the other side. Christmas in Vegas. Monday on TLC. Presenting Songs for Worship, the best praise and worship songs of all time. Get Songs for Worship on two CDs or two cassettes for just $12.99. Then audition other praise and worship albums. Satisfaction guaranteed. So call now for Songs for Worship. To order Songs for Worship, use your credit card and call 1-800-213-8484 or send $12.99 for two CDs or two cassettes plus $3.99 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. More than 200 million people visit theme parks in the United States each year. Over 50 million pass through the turnstiles in Florida alone. Beloved cartoon characters and familiar action heroes help generate billions and billions of dollars. At Universal Studios, 2,000 people an hour flow through one of the most thrilling high-tech attractions ever conceived. Here, the show goes on 365 days a year. Put your hands together and shout and cheer for the Universal Studios Monsters! With theme parks rapidly expanding around the globe, one attraction still stands out. It's Back to the Future, created by Douglas Trumbull. Well, I think I first realized there was an amazing opportunity for immersive cinema experiences when I worked with Stanley Kubrick on 2001, which was 70 millimeter giant screen, and it had this huge sequence at the end of the movie particularly, which took the audience on a trip into space. It wasn't about plot or story or character development. It was a, what I call now an immersive experience. And that made me believe that it was possible in the cinema to create experiences where the audience gets to be the actor in a sense and gets to be in the movie rather than looking at the movie. There's only one troublemaker who can throw a monkey wrench in the works like this. Biff Tannen, juvenile delinquent. I'm going to take a little joy ride. No! Bye-bye! Why time travel? 
volunteers. You and you and you. You're my only hope. The eighth house of New It's just beyond that door where you're standing. You've got to catch Biff. The fate of the entire universe rests in your hands. Hang on to your hats. When you see Biff and the little lawyer accelerate to 88 miles per hour and bump him. I believe that the Back to the Future ride is like an out-of-body experience. It's like a dream. It's like some experience beyond reality. Back to the Future was all made with models. It was made before we had computer uh, imaging or computer uh, electronic compositing. So it was all sort of in camera op and opticals. Uh, we had to find ways to hide the rigs for all the miniatures. Uh, because the fisheye lens was not only looking 180 degrees out to the sides, it was looking straight up into the stage. That would be really nice. Since I'd been involved in the kind of inception of the simulation ride, I had a very good idea about how you coordinate the motion of what you physically feel with the motion of the camera through the environment. So the physical sensations that you feel during that ride exactly synchronize to what you see. For me, it's an art form that I'm exploring. This is not some cheap thrill ride experience for fun and games to make money. Just for fun, we asked ace stunt pilot Sandy Roselle to take us with him on the ride. Here we go. Just yet, like the acceleration that you feel on takeoff when you go into afterburner. It's very realistic, you know, in the pitch movements. In Back to the Future, the special eight-passenger DeLorean car never actually goes anywhere. But its computer-controlled movements make it as exciting as a flight in a jet fighter. I'm getting a, a lot of sensation on my back, like I do when I throw the airplane around. A pretty rough place. Uh, we don't have reverse on the airplane, but this is pretty cool anyway. Dumping G's going a little negative. It's a Tyrannosaurus Rex! Look out! High G turn. Come on, big girl. You reverse position to come back over the crowd. High banking turn, pull G's. Come back around. Being on that ride is a lot like flying an airplane. You simulate the, the, the banks, and, and even though you don't pull G's, the sudden and abruptness of the ride does give you a feeling like you're changing direction, which is similar to what we feel uh, when we're pulling G's. But what do the experts think? It was scary at first. Yeah, it was fun. It was realistic. And, and like afterwards, you want to go over it, on it again and again and again and again. Because I want to go on it again. hurts. Well, I think it's just oh, awesome. Fun. We loved it. We want to go back. Just like the blockbusters that inspired them, a successful movie attraction keeps people coming back time and again. You know, we've done a lot of research that shows that quite a lot of people are kind of feeling that life is kind of dull and boring and doesn't give them a kind of knife edge experience. They're looking for risk. They're looking for something that makes them feel alive. Risk and fear that they can control. And the theme park experience gives them that. It gives them a kind of sense of risk. And it also gets them away from thinking about the kind of pressures of life and the stress of life and gets them so absorbed in that. Makes them feel that they're alive. Bringing people together to share a thrilling experience is also part of the formula. I think the theme park is a great place for romance in a sense because what you're doing is you're bringing with you somebody who you want to forge a close relationship with. And I think it's part and parcel of, of that, that that encourages young couples uh, to go to kind of theme experiences, particularly where there's a kind of risky ride involved. Danger, sense of danger, being in the midst of danger. I think this is all a secret we have in within ourselves that we want to be close to. We all want to make fires. I mean, as kids, we start with making fires. And how close you get to a fire, I mean, you want to try to get as close till you burn your hands or your arm or your hair <laughs> or your pants, whatever, you know? There's actually a kind of funny hysteria that sets in when people know they're being tricked. They like that. It's like a good magic act. They know they're safe, and yet they're afraid. And that leads to laughter. And so uh, this is 
you know, a very powerful new technology that people really love and crave because it pro provides a kind of stimulating, thrilling, fun, safe, yet scary experience that goes beyond the limitations of the normal cinema. This TLC program is sponsored in part by the Citibank Advantage Card, miles that take you further. teaches kids to read. Utah. And I learn the state. And so much more. And I learn the music. The Leap Pad and from LeapFrog. And I learn... You gotta know the difference between wet and dry. If you're dry, you'll be more comfortable. Look, here's how it works. If the training pads get wet, the stars go away. Don't get them wet. Why? Because that means you're not dry. Help your child learn to potty train with pull-ups training pants with magic stars that fade when they get wet. So be consistent and stick with pull-ups. Ooh, still got your stars. Give your big kid a reason to stay dry. I'm a big kid now. Could you pay attention to me, please? Welcome to America Online, new version 6.0. The easiest just got even easier. You just plug it in and you're good to go. With 6.0, all the best features are even better. You've got mail. Parental controls help safeguard our kids. Customer service is always there to help. I can shop 24 hours a day. AOL guarantees all my holiday purchases. And AOL has over 300 stores so it's easy to do all your holiday shopping. America Online new version 6.0. So easy to use, no wonder it's number one. Call 1-800-4-ONLINE now. Presenting the best minivan ever. The only one available with power sliding doors and a power hatch. Nothing else is remotely like it. The all-new Dodge Grand Caravan. Different. Finally, there's good trash on television. These scrappy soldiers have powered their way to the top and crushed the competition. Now they're geared up for the main event, the Junkyard Wars Finals. Don't miss it. Wednesday at 9 on TLC. TLC takes you back in time to solve a mystery. The discovery of medieval graves and a Roman sarcophagus stunned scientists. Forensic examinations reveal two dramatically different lives. Princess and the Pauper, Thursday at 10 on TLC. Medicine and compassion. Emergency and recovery. On January 1st, experience life in the ER all day long. The anxiety is part of the job. trauma -fun. New Year's Day, all day on TLC. Where can you find the most interesting gifts this holiday? Come to discovery.com and click on store. For gifts the whole family will enjoy, check out our wide selection of telescopes and stargazing tools. Or find a truly unique gift for that special person on your list. And we've spotlighted our hottest gifts for him, for her, or for kids to make your shopping easier than ever. Take a look at some of this year's favorite toys. Give the gift of discovery. Come to discovery.com and click on store. You're watching Christmas Eve Thrills all night on TLC. Universal's headquarters have long stood as a symbol of the gigantic blockbusters that have made Hollywood the center of a thriving global industry. Every day, readers review dozens of film scripts to see if they've got what it takes to make the next big movie and the next killer theme park attraction. Just like in the movies, everything begins with a script, a drawing board, models, and a lot of imagination. Phil Hedema is the vice president of Universal Creative. In the initial brainstorming process, we 
generate a whole lot of ideas. Uh, there is no idea that's too crazy to consider um, because we really want to do things that have never been accomplished before. The team we have here at Universal is pretty um, wily, I'd say, about understanding what's doable and what's not. And we generally try and pull, uh, pull ideas that are just outside the envelope of doability or what's been done in the past, um, and then concentrate on those. And we've, we've pretty much experienced over the years that once we set our sights on something, if we are diligent enough about it, we can eventually find a way to accomplish it. The expansion of the theme park in Florida was one of Phil's biggest challenges. It wasn't easy to turn this piece of bare land into Islands of Adventure, a massive theme park that opened in 1999. Creators tried to set a standard others would find hard to match. Creating a theme park is like starting a city from scratch. Only in this city, the entire population comes and goes every day. Streets, water supplies, and restaurants must be able to support tens of thousands of daily visitors. In uh, Marvel Superhero Island, uh, I'll tell you right now, the, the most leading attraction from a technological standpoint will be our Spider-Man ride. Here comes Spider-Man in 3D film right at you. And he lands on the front of the vehicle, and when he does, the vehicle, you know, bounces in response to the fact that he just landed on you. And he puts out his finger and he says, I want you to help me. And when he does, the vehicle kind of rocks back, because of course it's on a motion base. And the finger, you could swear, you know, you could <clears throat> reach up and, uh, and touch it. It's so real. In Florida, Jurassic Park Island is five ten in Hollywood. At the Jurassic Park River Adventure, lifelike dinosaurs blink, breathe, even flinch when touched. With an 85-foot drop, this water ride is among the longest ever built. You know, it's a very aggressive industry. I mean, you'll hear Disney and Universal Studios say publicly that uh, they don't mind the competition in Orlando, that in fact, you know, what's good for one is good for the other. Anything that's new powers the market and brings more people on. But, you know, in actuality, they're very competitive and they're very fierce in trying to create the next best attraction, the next great thing, because they want the largest part of the audience share that they can get. I think it's safe to say it's a multi-billion dollar industry. It's, um, you know, if uh, you look at a, a Disneyland um, doing 12 million uh, people a year, and that's a, that's a very conservative estimate, um, and, uh, you know, say 25 to 30 dollars a ticket, well, do the math, it really adds up, and that doesn't even account for uh, concessions income and merchandise, so they rack up some large sums of money, and um, you've got to think that to be able to afford a hundred million dollar theme park ride, um, and, you know, they usually add major attractions every second year, um, you've got to know that they're raking in some pretty major bucks. At the new park in Orlando, even the parking garages were built on a massive scale. They were designed to accommodate thousands and thousands of daily visitors. Like the Great Wall of China, they may even be visible from space. Despite the construction, it was still business as usual in the older section of the park. <laughs> Although many enjoy revisiting their favorite attractions, these streets would soon be empty if there weren't something new to experience. Competition in the business is intense. To keep the crowds coming, parks must open a new attraction every two years. That means taking a hundred million dollar guess about what movie will be the next blockbuster. Few can afford to make incorrect predictions. The theme park industry is so new that you really can't buy a book. You cannot buy a book that tells you how you design a theme park or how you design a theme attraction. Our industry is still in what you'd call the oral tradition. The only way you can learn how to design a theme park or a theme attraction is someone has to mentor you and tell you. When we're trying to find a movie that lends itself to being a ride, we look at action sequences, chase sequences, physical dynamic motion, uh, you know, things that lend themselves to some kind of very powerful, visceral, but short simulation experience. You know, a love story doesn't usually lend itself to that.
after the success of Terminator, its sequel, Terminator 2, looked like a surefire bet. To create the movie attraction, Terminator 2 3D, director James Cameron was reunited with the original cast, Arnold Schwarzenegger, Linda Hamilton, and Eddie Furlong. The heart of the show is a specially made film shot in 3D. At almost $2 million a minute, it's among the most expensive movie shoots in history. In Orlando, a brand new theater was built, especially for Terminator 2 3D. We're taking this group of people in this theater and we're putting them in the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Linda Hamilton and it's all directed by James Cameron. It's his vision, it's his attraction experience that we're putting this entire group of people in it. Where else can you say that Arnold came out, came from the future to the present and took me back to the future with him? Yeah. That's what we're doing that nobody else has done before. Well, the, the T2 3D project, or, or T2 Battle Across Time, was, was, uh, was pretty exciting because it was a blend of, of the film, film science that, that I know uh, taken to a new extreme, which is, a, which is a, a higher resolution because it's in 70 millimeter, and 3D with all of those challenges, which are kind of fascinating. But, but really beyond that, there was something, something very interesting where they were integrating film and the kind of proscenium theatrical experience into the, into the same uh, project. So we actually have characters jumping into the screen, coming back out of the screen, and we're trying to break down that, that barrier between the, between the audience and the events in the picture. When you see him having this huge kind of uh, uh, weapons in front of him, and he reaches out, that you, that the audience will be jumping back because with the 3D technology, it will really feel like he's taking your head off, not just mine. Uh, T2 3D was very challenging in that we were doing um, a 3D ride film. It's a stereoscopic 65 millimeter shoot, which basically means you have. Uh, a camera, a twin camera system that's about the size of a large refrigerator. And uh, working with Jim Cameron, Jim likes to move the camera a lot. We're, we're trying to move, you know, a two-ton uh, camera around like what Jim's used to moving a steady camera around. We were also uh, mixing media uh, in a big way. There was location uh, work where we were blowing up, you know, a, a small village in, in uh, Arizona. So lots of live physical production. Uh, stunts, but there's also some very, very complicated computer graphics. You basically have to do everything twice. If we're animating a shot for a scene in the, in the experience, you have to do it twice, one for each eye. And a lot of what we had done, the, uh, the size and scale at which we were doing it, had never been done before. So there's a, there's a vast kind of learning curve uh, just to figure out and sort out all the technical intricacies of how we're going to pull this off, and then you have to actually go and do it. Look out! Go! Once Cameron, Schwarzenegger, and the rest of the cast finished filming, it was a race against time to get the theater in Orlando ready by the opening date. 2,500 people pass through the show every hour. There's no room for improvisation. To maintain the illusion, everything must work perfectly. I've got to be true to everybody. I've got to be true to um, making the lighting invisible. I've got to be true to uh, picking up um, people and their faces and their figures in a way that they won't really be as recognizable as a lighting designer should make them. Oddly enough, in this case, We've got to make these uh, characters, who, the real characters, invisible enough so that you can't tell that they are not, in fact, the people we're trying to sell the audience that they are. Um, but they've still got to be lit well enough so that you can see them and see what they're doing. Technology can't solve every problem. Across the country, auditions were held to find actors for the lead roles during the live action segments of the attraction. 14 Terminators were chosen. It's day one, and anxious fans await the opening of James Cameron's 3D adventure.
After months of preparation, it's time for the Terminator to go to work. The pre-show begins by easing the audience into the world of the Terminator. It's a perfect setup for the thrills and chills about to come. Okay, listen to me, everybody. We don't have much time. Skynet is your enemy. It must be destroyed before it destroys us. Don't believe this cutesy pie video and their slick marketing. These corporate pigs aren't selling safety, they're selling death. Sliding doors, new power hatch, new brighter headlamps, new, new, new. Dodge Grand Caravan, the best minivan ever. And did we mention it's new? The all new Dodge Caravan, different. CEOs. One encouraged his employees to read the Wall Street Journal. The other did not. Let's join them for their five-year anniversaries and see what happened. Imagine what the journal could do for you. It's now easier to get the journal to help you. Get eight weeks of the Wall Street Journal for just 37 cents a day. That's 50% off the regular rate. Call 800-923-3300. That's 800-923-3300. For the Wall Street Journal. TLC brings you a night of scream machines. White knuckle it through the greatest stomach turning, hair raising, heart stopping, pulse pounding thrill rides of all time. Strap yourself in for Christmas Eve thrills. Continues all night on TLC. Time is running out, but we must press on. Our objective remains clear. A voyage of discovery. The cold and exhaustion are beginning to take a toll. I sense I'm losing the confidence of the men. Discipline is breaking down, but I remain hopeful. This holiday season, forget the big expedition and explore the store that has something for everyone, on land or online. Give the gift of discovery. And our Craftmatic Model 2 adjustable bed is so relaxing. It may even temporarily provide relief from my low back pain, Harry. Yet it costs up to 56% less than a quality flatbed. I adjust my head and feet and fall right to sleep. 
Call toll-free to get free information by mail about the Craftmatic Model 2 adjustable bed. This wonderful bed adjusts to hundreds of relaxing positions, offers optional warm, soothing heat, and relaxing built-in massage, yet costs up to 56% less than these quality flat beds. Up to 56% less! Don't pay more to remain flat. Call toll-free and get complete free facts by mail about the adjustable bed that costs up to 56% less. Call to get Craftmatic's free catalog right away. There's absolutely no obligation. Call toll-free 1-800-587-4646. That's 1-800-587-4646 toll-free. 1-800-587-4646. After years of planning and construction, it was finally time to present the two and a half billion dollar Islands of Adventure attraction to the media. We've got rides that create drops, twists, turns, near misses, and above all, it gives people that have never even been Orlando a reason to come for the first time. How can it not be a great attraction with Spider-Man, Wolverine, the Incredible Hulk, Captain America, Doctor Doom? I mean, I can't believe it. The human race is so lucky that all these characters are going to be assembled in one spot and people will have a chance to come and see them and thrill to their activities. I, I, I don't know. I think we ought to be tax exempt. We're doing so much for humanity. <laughs> one of the park's biggest projects was inspired by the 1996 blockbuster movie Twister. The idea was simple create a tornado so real the public senses they can almost touch it. It had to be thrilling and terrifying, yet perfectly safe. I got a copy of the script, I read it, and I was very, very excited about the potential for it to be a huge, huge and very successful attraction. From there, we went ahead and started developing concepts, and we actually showed some of them to Steven Spielberg as well as Jean Dubon. While filming a high-tech action commercial, Jean Dubont, the director of Speed and Twister, took a moment to explain why he thinks the public likes paying money to be scared to death. So when you make the movement around, that you was a camera come in a little bit, go back, that really gives a little feeling. Wondering if there's a way to do... I think control no, fear, is, it's, it's a good thing. You know, once it's over, it is incredible relaxing. It gives you like an incredibly satisfied feeling, like you feel, feel like you've accomplished something. Of course, you've accomplished nothing at all, but it gives the, 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 it gives the sense of having accomplished something, which is great. It is fun to see the movie actually come alive again after the movie's over. It's kind of fun to, to, have it, uh, to have it have a second use. I always liked the idea of the audience participating in, in, in the movie. I wish there was in the theater more than just the big screen and, and 40 sets of loudspeakers. I wish there was like more physicality to it, that the chairs would move, that the wind would come around your ears, that, that it would be more like a smell, that you would sense more what the actors feel. Mike Hightower was the project manager for Twister. Just like in the movies, every tiny detail had to be worked out before production began. The audience was always at the front of his mind. We went out and found some consultants that have built actual tornadoes in, in science centers and museums. We've uh, gone to universities that have a tornado research center, and we've used those guys and how they've built tornadoes. And then we started with the uh, it was much more practical to build a one-fourth scale and do all the testing and prove that it works before we went to the full scale. The test showed that the design worked. It was time for the project to move on to the real thing. This attraction will definitely get everyone's adrenaline rushing. I mean, to see a tornado that's going to be 50 foot tall and 15 foot in diameter, 20 feet in front of you, and with all the special lighting and all, it will scare the pants off people. With the scale tests completed, Mike had only 12 months to get Twister up and running. Among his first tasks was to finish the building that would house the attraction. Though the tests were favorable, no one knew for sure just how real and just how scary an indoor tornado could be. Three months later, it was time to find out. You can 
see in the background, there's fans installed on that mezzanine deck. And so we're about one week away from being able to turn on all the fans and start testing the full-scale tornado in this building. The fans that drive Twister are powerful, capable of filling a hot air balloon in just four seconds. We believe we've done our homework, you know, and we've done all the testing, but you never know until you see it for yourself in the full scale that it's going to absolutely work. Twister's first full-size tornado test was a big success, but elsewhere, there was still a lot to be done. Rising out of the swampland, the design of Islands of Adventure began to take shape. These skeletal frames now play host to everyone and everything from Dr. Seuss to the Lost Continent, from Sinbad and Popeye to Spider-Man. Everyone worked to meet the deadline. For some, working on the park was a dream come true, just like running away to join the circus. This is one of the key attractions of the Islands of Adventure. It's one of the key attractions of Superhero Island, obviously. It's the Hulk roller coaster. This roller coaster has 13 major movements in it, everything from a cobra roll out on the very end to a zero-g inverted loop at the top of the lift, which no one else has ever done. Behind me is the uh, uh, Jurassic Park River Adventure, which is the largest attraction in Jurassic Park. Um, it's a boat ride down the river through Island Nublar, and it highlights all the dinosaurs that we have bioengineered in Jurassic Park. Uh, in this experience, we are going to take you through a high-energy pre-show. You're going to start to lose control. When we put you on the Hulk accelerator, you will glow green in the tube, and for the next three and a half minutes, lose control. On our attraction, you are, are taken into Ultrasaur Lagoon, and um, we show you our Ultrasaurs. Uh, we have some Satakasaurs that you get to see. Then we take you into uh, Stegosaur Springs and show you the Stegosaurs. And then we journey into Hadrosaur Cove, where we show you um, some Paralophosauruses. Uh, we call them Perrys just because it's so hard to pronounce their name. Okay, behind us is Dr. Doom's Fear Fall. It's two 200-foot towers that we intend to take you through a ride attraction that simulates sucking the fear juice from your body. After a pre-show element, you'll sit down in the ride and sit in a small seat where you're dangling, your feet are free, and the shoulder restraint comes down over you. After a real quick fogging of the area, the ride will actually shoot you 200 feet in the air at four Gs, four times the weight of gravity. Uh, at the end of the launch cycle, you'll be 200 feet in the air, in which you'll be nearly motionless, which point will shoot you back down toward Earth at a little over 1G. So you'll actually be accelerating back toward that small opening you just came from. With construction moving ahead, Steven Spielberg arrived to check out how things were going. Tim, the manufacturer of this coaster says this is the family coaster. Uh, the real adventurous coaster is the dueling coaster over in Los Angeles. Right. Let's, right. right. so let's show you what we're going to do here. Yeah, we believe we've, we've raised the bar on entertainment. We believe that by moving to where you have immersed someone so that all the senses are excited or touched on by different elements of our rides and shows, you've, you've immersed them in the experience. They've become, whether it's Dr. Doom's fear fall, by the time you get shot up into the air, it's not just riding a cart into the air. You feel the entire experience of Dr. Doom taking the fear juice from your body and distilling it so that he can uh, attack the uh, Fantastic Four. It's hard to describe how exciting it is to see a project that you've worked on for six years and started just as an idea in your head and then went, became drawings on paper, now becoming fully dimensional and you can literally take a walk through it and see it all coming to life around you. And it's really satisfying to know that the things you thought about five years ago, as they come to life, seem that they're really going to work and really be compelling and exciting experiences for people. A project of this size involves talent from all over the world. 
In Seattle, Washington, an orchestra recorded the theme for one of the park islands, where each ride is distinguished by its own musical score. Even before Twister opened to the public, ride and movie-related merchandise sold fast. <music> Meanwhile, Mike Hightower and his team were fine-tuning all the behind-the-scene elements that they hoped would make Twister the real thing. We want the people to really feel like and believe they're in an actual storm, and so we have lots of wind blowing on them, but that wind actually is counterproductive to us making a vortex. So we've had to walk this fine balance between having a beautiful vortex and blowing uh, the people like crazy. I want it more vicious. I want it more violent looking. They think I'm crazy. Um, but I do have a, a distinctive image of how I think the tornado should look like. I think we surprised, in even some cases, people in our own company that, that were maybe doubters that we could pull all this off in the time frame. So now we've kind of raised the threshold in terms of interactivity with the guest. And so now we, we, we just set our own standard to beat ourselves for the next time. Despite the team's tremendous effort to open on schedule, they didn't count on a real natural disaster. Just miles away, Mother Nature unleashed the biggest round of tornadoes in Florida history. Mayor Tamsin, what have you seen? Well, good morning. We're right down the street actually being blocked off from the area that police are telling us is hardest hit here in Seminole County. At least six buildings here are demolished. Many of them are missing roofs, uh, walls. It is simply an amazing sight to behold. By the following morning, it was clear the area had been devastated. And then the trailer started to move and shake, and it was just like two seconds. It wasn't like the wind sounded loud at all for a long period of time, you know? And uh, I found all this stuff on top of me. I thought I was going to die. The opening for Twister was postponed. Mike and his team completed the attraction in record time, but it no longer mattered. It was very unfortunate, but uh, you know we are very sensitive at this time, and it's just it's the right thing to do is is to to delay and and wait till the community has had a chance to heal. We're donating hundred thousand dollars to the Red Cross for local relief efforts, and we've immediately stopped all of our advertising and marketing campaigns locally and nationwide to make sure that we can pull them back, take another look at them, be a little bit more sensitive, and reissue them when the time is right. Thank you. Tell your friends where you got that now. You don't need to go to extremes to afford a great car. Not in Oldsmobile zero to pay drive away, zero down plus zero payments, and zero interest for one full year for qualified buyers on every 2000 and 2001 Oldsmobile. That's right, absolutely zero to pay for one entire year. Limitations apply, call for details. So save your green and see your Oldsmobile dealer today. star meals from world-renowned chef Michelle Rue. Celebrity, the one cruise that puts dining in a whole new light. Celebrity cruises, sea life on a different level. Get behind the wheel. your going south the 35 greatest southern rock hits of all time Just hold on. you can order online at musicspace.com
this 35 track collection is not sold in any store. She said, don't hand me no lines and keep your hands to yourself. Order by credit card now and get a free Going South poster. Where are you going? Going South. To order, call the number on your screen or log on to musicspace.com. Rush delivery available. Do it now. This is my town, Vegas, baby, Vegas. TLC will take you behind the scenes. Show you how to win big. Maybe catch a show. The best part? We're doing it all day Christmas. All the twinkling lights, you'll feel right at home. Spend Christmas in Vegas, Monday on TLC. Finally, there's good trash on television. These scrappy soldiers have powered their way to the top and crushed the competition. Now they're geared up for the main event, the Junkyard Wars Finals. Don't miss it, Wednesday at 9 on TLC. Now, on Discovery Health Channel. Take a closer look. Inside medicine's most intriguing mysteries. Breakthroughs that are changing lives. We were able to give them new hope. And new perspectives. On the miracle of birth. And at the compelling drama. Of real life medicine. I can give her the best nursing care that I was able to. Take a closer look. Real people. Real stories. Real medicine. All next week, beginning at 8 on Discovery Health Channel. In Florida, Mike Hightower finally received the green light to open Twister. It was a battle against the clock of nature. But the 2,400 people who flow through the ride every hour seem to think it was all worth it. It turns out that being lashed by computer-controlled rain and 30-mile-per-hour winds can be a lot of fun. Moving on to his next assignment, project manager Mike Hightower took a final windy curtain call. For the people behind the movie attraction business, picking the next blockbuster and figuring out how to turn it into a new and thrilling experience remains a constant challenge. The public now expects every new ride to top the last. Hollywood designers must predict which upcoming movies are suited to become attractions that will grab the public's imagination. It's pretty much for me uh, the ideal situation when like the director and the producer who like kind of did the you know the movie also do the rights because they kind of pretty much developed the movie they know the look they know what like uh, made the movie which also could make the rights so I would say that's the ideal situation <laughs> Godzilla could be a really fun ride. We, we, we were talking about it very recently. Uh, yeah, I, I could imagine uh, doing something fun with that. But again, I, I think these things can always either be an exploitation of a movie or an extension of a movie. And I think when it's done best, it's an extension of the movie. It allows you to participate in the film. I mean, I can't wait for the technology to go a little faster. It's still a little slow for my taste. I mean, my imagination goes quite often beyond what is possible yet. <laughs> It's a dream made in Hollywood, but instead of just watching the screen, we can almost become part of the action once we step through the gates of a theme park. The dream is closer than ever before. Very, very close.